Welcome to Asteroid Search campaign. The first thing that you need to do for this campaign is to download Astrometrica software. And to do so, you need to just open browser and search for IASC, which is International Astronomical Search Collaboration. When you click on this website, you need to click on this third tab, Astrometrica. Scroll down. This is Astrometrica setup. Click on it. The download hardly takes a minute. Just click on the setup file. Installation process is very, very, very easy. It hardly takes half a minute. Now this software can only work on Windows laptop and not on Mac operating systems. It's only compatible with Windows. So I'm going to minimize this Windows. Now you can see a shortcut has been created on my desktop, but I'm not going to access Astrometrica from here. There are certain glitches if you open the software from here. So it's always recommended and it's my personal experience. I would say go to C drive and you will find Astrometrica folder and here is the application file to open the software. So always do so to prevent any errors that may occur during your search. Press OK. Yes. And this is the software which you will be using to work on. Now, on the right bottom, you see ps1.cfg. This is the configuration that should be showing when you install your software. If PS1 is not being shown and it's something like astrometrica.cfg, you need to bring it to ps1.cfg. And to bring this configuration, you need to click on this banner, which is a settings button you can see here. And simply open and load the file. So you, you will get configuration files in settings of Astrometrica. If not, if you are not able to find, so see, if I just click on this, it will set my software to astrometrica.cfg. If I go in settings and search for PS1, it will set it back to PS1 Wala setting. So what you need to do is check whether it is at ps1.cfg, fit order three, and now you're good to go. Initially, when you install the software, it will ask for a registration key and registration key is provided to you in your email. You simply need to click on registration and license name is IISC and key is given to you on email. Just press OK and now you have Astrometrica for free for your lifetime. Now the next part is to download practice image sets. Before the campaign starts, it's always recommended we go and practice certain samples. So to do so, what you are going to do is go to ISC website again, click on campaigns. Here are the current ongoing campaigns that you will see. When you participate in any campaign, your campaign will highlight here and you will be able to see all the preliminary detections that you are doing for the campaign. So your data files you will get from this particular website. You have to open your campaign and your files will be available. Right now, I'm not a part of any campaign as of now. My next campaign begins soon, so I cannot access any files. But practice image sets are available on third tab. Click on Astrometrica, scroll down. It's always best if we go through the quick start guide. Here are the practice image sets. Just click on them and it will start downloading. I have already downloaded the image sets. They are here on my downloads. It's as a zip file, you will have to unzip and there are many data sets. So you'll have to independently unzip each file. So say for example, I open P11. Each data set should have four image files. If there are no four image files, there's something wrong with the data. So coming back to Astrometrica software, I'm going to go to file, load images. I'm going to go back to downloads where I have stored my file. Practice image sets, open any image set. I am going working with 11. You have to select all four of them and simply hit open. Make sure they are on 25, 25, 25 person. They all are four image set taken via CCD camera. Now see when I'm scrolling on this gray part, look at the values which are changing in the bottom down here, down here. So you see X and Y, which are your reference points. And now you look at I, I is intensity, 01568 is what you see when I bring it here. Here 
at this black point it's reduced it's getting reduced now when i bring it to this white spot it increases so intensity varies as in when you move ahead so this particular values tell you what the intensity of this particular object is but this uh, other quantities are not very important for us right now again go back and check it is it ps1 now once you set it up it always stays as ps1 what you are going to do next is click on data reduction astrometric data reduction and hit okay so it will extract all the objects in this sky because sky has large amount of data so it will extract data and it's sh it's showing not responding but it's an ongoing process so do not uh, shut down the laptop or do not cancel or turn off the software now based on your internet speed it this thing can happen very fast or it may take little time so now it shows you the table no need of reading this you can simply hit cross here also or minimize it like this so you see green dots here so they have identified all the objects for you next thing that you are going to do is object detection moving object detection so i'm going to hit this as well sometimes this is a part which takes most amount of time extracting and then comes data reduction part now once that's done what you need to do is you can even click on invert image if you like to view it like this so this just changes the background color i like to work on this gray scale now what you're going to do is known object overlay so the first thing is data reduction then you do object detection moving object detection then you click on known object overlay so it's done it's a quite a quick process now once this is done what you are going to do is you are going to click on fit window size and you are going to click on blink current images so blink current images is going to blink all the four images that's going to run all the four images at once and then you hit mag zoom in button twice that's my recommendation and then again fit button and then i bring it to my screen at the center so this moving screen the blinking screen is what you are going to observe now the first thing that you are going to do is drag this taskbar to the left and this one on the top you can hit zoom once if you want more clear vision so it depends totally on you how how you want to view it okay so i'm taking it on left this is on top i checked it it's working now i'm just zooming in it now the best way to view it is this is on top this is on left most now you observe this section of the palette first this section of the sky whatever image you see here try to see are there any objects which are moving any moving objects that you can detect in this section you can also click on invert image if you want to see now images have been inverted so you might detect it some people like this thing because it's easier to detect moving object i'll scroll down no i don't see anything in this particular patch i am going to go a little quick now i'm coming towards right now i'm going to check this section of the graph right from the top uh, i don't see any moving object then you keep going like this on the rightmost part so first thing that you're going to scroll is this taskbar then you're going to bring come down like this then you come to the second middle section of the image then you go back to the left drag this thing to the left then again come down come to right and then go to the left so that you don't miss out on any section of this graph can you see this black dot which is moving see one two three four so i found one moving object here so can you see this it's clear okay so what next you are going to do once you know how to scroll through say after scrolling this thing and you reach this particular image set now you have detected something which is moving so i like to work on this scale you can work on the invert image as well so i see this thing moving and i can see it in three images more than three images you can see the title here one two three four it should appear at least in three things 
So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to go to the manual mode. I'm just going to hit this thing, single step forward. So I know this is my object. To verify, I'll just go back. Oh, where is it? It's here. Now I'll just bring it in my visible zone. Okay, I can see it here. I am just going to click on this particular object. And this is what opens up. Now there are five conditions that an asteroid should classify to be a asteroid. So five conditions that an object should meet to be an asteroid. So first condition, it should appear circular. It should appear circular. Second, the object should move in a straight line. So we saw that our moving object was in a straight line. The third condition is this SNR, signal noise ratio. This should be more than five. Signal noise ratio, SNR value should be more than five. Sometimes if you get 4.8, 4.9 and all other conditions are being met, uh, mean or tag those uh, moving objects as asteroids, uh, it's fine. You can always do that. So have your best judgment there. Then look at this R value. If I go to the next image set and I'll see this thing, R value will should be nearby. I'm saying 20.7, 19, 21, something. R value should be very close to, uh, the, like they should be comparable. They all should be nearby. Now look at this white dots. This white dot should trace this bell shaped curve. They should be somewhat or nicely near this particular bell shaped curve. They should form this pattern. They should appear as if they are making a bell shaped curve. Once you think yes, it meets all the five requirements and you are ready to name it as a asteroid. What I'm going to do is I think it meets all the five criteria. So I'm going to click here. I'm going to decide on what name I need to give. So I'm going to I am restricted to choose three alphabets. So I will choose any three alphabets, LAVS love, and I'm choosing my birth date and birth year. So three alphabets and four numbers. And I click on accept and it gets named. Now you have to tag this asteroid in all the four images. I'm going now to the next one. I'm going to hit it here. SNR value is five. I'm going to, and you have to name it same what you named last time. So LAV2890. And I'm going to accept. Now I'm going to go to the next one. I'm going to tag this one as well. LAV2890. See the R value, it's near 20. This is seven. Most of the time, if one thing meets the criteria, all others will. Now see the fourth one. It's dicey, but I saw three images wherein it fulfilled the condition. Even the fifth, uh, fourth one is meeting. But if your three images are meeting the condition, fourth one is not, it's fine. Name it. It's acceptable. So my four data sets have been named. So I'm just looking at it again. So it's in straight line. Now let's come back and scroll and see can I find any other moving objects do I have access to any other more so there will be more than one there could be less so it totally depends on how you are going to run this or trace this particular image so I'm scrolling down I'm going to left see if you can see any moving objects if you find easier to look here, then I'll go on invert image and I'm going again to the left, stopped, nothing. Usually you should spend some time on each particular frame. I'm just moving. It's just a tutorial here. We'll name one more. We'll try to find one more moving object. Now tell me one mistake. This image is steady. What did we forget? We forget to blink the images. You need to blink the images. If images are not blinking, you will never ever be able to find the asteroid. 
So sometimes such kind of error may happen. Sometimes it will be difficult that you rename a file and it doesn't appear on this screen as a pink thing. But it's fine. It's still acceptable. Can you see this particular section? I can see this thing moving. You see one, two, three and four. Yes, three images are quite visible. Fourth one is behind some object. It's fine. Acceptable. Try to tag it. So stop and move. And I'll just invert. I like to see it like this. I'll just run it to show you how this thing moves in a straight line. I'll watch one image at a time. Yes, it's a straight line. Meets first condition. Hit this. SNR value greater than five. R value, it's fine. It's more or less. Oh, it's a good bell shaped curve. It appears circular to me. Let's name it. So, LAV2811. Accept. Go to the next one. Tag this. This one, since it's hidden, I am just renaming it directly without checking any parameters. I'm going to the next one. I see this here. I'm going to hit at the center. SNR value greater. R is equal, bell shape curved and circular. So usually you just observe one motion, like if it is in straight line and tag first one and you can just keep tagging other ones on the way. You don't need to see it more precisely because it will be greater than that. It will meet all the conditions. So my four images are here. Okay, so we have named, say imagine as if we have labeled several asteroids in this particular uh, picture. Okay, you have gone through all the sections of the graph and now you can't find anything moving. So you simply go to file and view NPC file report. So see, the, if I have found two asteroids, I'll see eight names here. Okay, and I'm going to select this thing copy so i need to copy paste it so what i'm going to do don't try control a it doesn't work so what you need to do is manually select like this control c and copy it on your notepad as of now once your campaign goes live you can go to uh, isc website log into your campaign and upload your npc report there but this is the process you're going to copy your npc report file and submit it there. How to do the submission once the campaign goes live? I am going to show you this. But I hope you understood. If you have any questions, let me know.